Welcome to Exploring Climate Change Myths and Facts with Dr. Mark. Uh, in, to, in today's video, we're going to talk about the CO2 saturation myth. First, a quick disclaimer. Uh, the opinions expressed in this video are solely mine. Uh, I receive no private or public funding for this presentation. And if you find this presentation interesting and informative, please share it with your friends and family. First, let's see what the CO2 saturation myth is about. Uh, basically, the CO2 saturation myth claims that the concentrations of greenhouse gases such as water vapor and CO2 in the lower atmosphere are already sufficient to trap almost all the thermal energy leaving the surface of the earth as infrared radiation. And that adding more CO2 would result in very little additional warming of the surface of the earth. How did this myth arise? Well, uh, it started uh, with an experiment by Angstrom back in 1896 in which uh, one of his lab assistants filled a tube of, uh, with carbon dioxide at about the same concentration that's found in the atmosphere and passed infrared uh, light through it. And what the assistant found was that the uh, extent of scattering of uh, infrared light by uh, the CO2 in the tube uh, did not depend very much on the concentration. And therefore, it was assumed that in the atmosphere, there was sufficient CO2 that it was saturated, that more CO2 uh, would not result in more uh, scattering or more warming. Now, uh, a number of works were done to uh, see if that, were uh, if that hypothesis were, was true. Uh, the most recent and probably the most famous is, is a, a preprint that was published about a year ago by William Van Wingegarden from Canada, uh, a meteorologist and a physicist, William Happer uh, from the United States, who have argued that doubling the current levels of CO2 in the atmosphere re will result in only about a 1% increase in surface temperature. Basically what Wingarden and Happer did was to try to model uh, the, the behavior of greenhouse gases such as water vapor and uh, CO2 in the atmosphere, uh, taking into account some of the properties of the atmosphere. However, they did not take into account all the ways in which heat is transferred in the atmosphere and uh, as far as I know, this paper has not ever been published in a referee journal. Nevertheless, it's uh, generated a lot of, of uh, presentations on, on the web and elsewhere that claim that both CO2 and water vapor uh, are, are saturated in the atmosphere. And what we're going to try to do today is to see whether or not uh, experiment agrees with that. And by experiment, I mean uh, comparing the actual uh, rate of global temperature rise uh, with the predictions of uh, Wingarden Happer's uh, climate change model. Now, if there really were greenhouse gas saturated, saturation in the atmosphere, we would see a logarithmic increase in global average surface temperature as the carbon dioxide concentration and the water vapor concentration in the atmosphere uh, increased. Uh, that's the purple curve here. And the left hand uh, axis shows rated of forcing in watts per square meter, but you can look at that as how much temperature uh, rise there is at the surface of the earth. Now, back at the beginning of the uh, industrial era, there was about 280 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And um, today there's about 440 uh, parts per million. And you can see over that period that there's a distinctive curve shape 
to the increase in radiative forcing and thus the increase in temperature. Uh, but what we need to do is look at what the data actually say. And we have good surface temperature data going back quite a long way. In fact, I like to use the data that comes from the Japan Meteorological Agency, mainly because they are not funded by a lot of the people that, uh, that are involved in atmospheric research. And they also present their data in a very simple way. Uh, they just simply show it as a time series and show how much the temperature, the average global surface temperature has, has changed over time. And they always fit a trend line to this data. And if you look at the red line on this graph, you see that uh, over uh, the last uh, 140 years or so, 130 years or so, uh, the average global temperature has risen at a rate of about uh, 0 0.72 degrees centigrade per century. And if we look in, if we take a closer look at the data, what do we find? Well, in this picture, what I have done is I fit two trend lines to the data. First, the trend line from 1890 to around 1940 during those 50 years, uh, the rate of increase of global temperature was uh, about 0 0.72 degrees per century. Uh, around 1940 uh, through uh, about 1970, 1980, there was a pause in global warming. And the reason for that is uh, the fact that there was massive electrification around the world and people began to burn an awful lot of coal and that produced uh, a large amount of fine particles in the atmosphere. And those fine particles changed the reflectivity of the earth to incoming uh, solar radiation uh, to such an extent that the warming caused by increasing uh, uh, greenhouse gases was masked. Uh, this lasted until about 1975 when pollution controls were put in place in most industrialized countries. Now, if you look at the black, the second black line, the one from about 1985 to, uh, to, the, to 2020, you see that the slope of, a of the trend line is much steeper. In fact, this trend line if, if, you do, if you run the numbers, this trend line would show uh, a, an annual global, uh, an average global temperature increase of about uh, 1.5 degrees centigrade per century. Now, these are the data. You can't escape the data. Uh, and what we have to do is ask, do these data agree with the prediction of uh, saturation of CO2 in the atmosphere. And clearly they don't, because if they were, if the, if they were to agree with the, with the prediction, then the rate of increase of global temperature should be slowing down, but clearly it's not. It's actually increasing faster than it was at the beginning of the industrial era. So what can we conclude? Well, the basic conclusion is that there's no evidence in the actual global average surface temperature data that the rate of increase is slowing down. In fact, while the early data show a temperature rise of about 0 0.72 degrees centigrade per century, the recent data show a temperature rise of about 1.5 degrees centigrade per, temp per century. So we conclude from examining the data that CO2 and other greenhouse gases are not saturated in the atmosphere. And we need to keep in mind a, a quotation from Richard Feynman about the relationship between theories and data. And if you're a physicist, you understand that it doesn't matter how beautiful your theory is. It doesn't understand how complicated your model is. It doesn't, understand, it doesn't matter how smart you are. If it doesn't agree with experiment, uh, it's wrong. And that's basically what we conclude about the idea that carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases are saturated in the atmosphere. Basically, they're not. And uh, in, a, in a subsequent video, I'll try to explain in more detail what's going on with uh, 
uh, CO2 and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and why it is the case that they are really far from saturated. 